from Anshay Svar Beth El Emeth Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of Parshat Toldot, the sale of the firstborn rights. We know that in Parshat Toldot, Yaakov tries to acquire the firstborn rights from his brother, the firstborn Esav, and with the transfer of the, the bowl of soup, the lentil soup, the birthright transfers uh, to Yaakov, or so it seems. At the end of the story, uh, it doesn't seem that Yaakov necessarily has that blessing or has any special rights. Esav is still getting some sort of special blessing. But nonetheless, it's, the story says that he sold the birthright. Esav sold his birthright. Many commentators have pointed out that this clearly shows that that Esav is not worthy for this blessing because he was willing to sell it. Whether the sale is effective or not, that's our topic for discussion today. What, what are they selling? The birthright, birthright? So what's going on? So Rashi says it's not the primogeniture, the double portion that a firstborn gets nowadays based on Torah laws. They didn't have a Torah yet. Rather, there was Avodah. There was the original idea was whoever was firstborn, they get to serve as like the high priest, the priest, the Kohanim. They do this offerings, and the other brothers don't. So he wanted to have that status. It wasn't appropriate for Esav, so wicked, to be in charge of the service and the worship. So Yaakov tried to wrestle it from his hands. The Rashbam says, no, it was the Pishnayim. It was the it was the uh, double portion. That was exactly what they were trying to get. What about the fact that the Pishnayim, the double portion, is not mandated by the Torah until later? doesn't matter. Firstly, rabbis say that the, the forefathers kept the Torah. But even beyond that, many of the practices that the Torah codifies as law are already existent uh, beforehand. Now they became, become a mitzvah when they're in the Torah. But before that, uh, there would be primogeniture in in ancient Near Eastern times, Code of Hammurabi or whatever it might be, um, it's not such an unusual thing. So he was trying to get the second, uh, the, the double portion. Now, the problem is, So we learn the third chapter of Bab Other places, you can't, uh, you, you can't sell something that's amorphous, that hasn't, it's not tangible, uh, that, that hasn't even been born yet. It doesn't even exist. How can you sell something that didn't exist? What are they trying to sell? The double portion. When Yitzchak dies, if there's anything left, double portion will go to Esau. But we don't know if there'll be anything left. Maybe we'll have uh, too many bills to pay from the, uh, from the old age home. We don't know. The Ibn Ezra believes that, that Yitzchak became very poor. He doesn't even have any soup in the house. There's nothing to eat. So uh, there's no meat. So, uh, so who's, who knows? And, and even if there's millions of dollars, it, 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 the, the inheritance hasn't passed yet from Yitzchak to anyone. He, he's not dead yet. And therefore, they're selling something that's intangible, according to the majority of the rabbis, against Rabbi Meir in the Talmud, or the majority of the rabbis, you cannot sell or buy something that hasn't been born yet. So that's the problem. However, the rush is quoted in some of the Balatosos as saying that Rabbeinu Asher, that it's different over here because Vayishavalo, he made Esav swear that the birthright is transferring. Oh, that's different. But the Rivash says, who cares if he swears, he doesn't swear. Even if he swears, you still can't transfer the ownership of something that isn't, that isn't born yet. So Rabbi Asher Weiss says that we have to understand. What is the problem of something that's not born yet? Is the problem that we need a physical acquisition. And we, we don't have it. So uh, you, you have to have something that you, you, have, you have control over. You have control over this piece of paper. I can sell you this piece of paper for a few cents. But if, if, if it's something that hasn't been born yet, you have no control over it. So it's hard to, to try to sell it. Or no. The problem is, that it's a big joke. Right now, we don't know what's going to be. We don't know who's going to die first. We don't know if he'll have any money. So 
lo samchadati. There's no smichus das. There, there's no resolve to really sell it. We, we can talk about it. Oh, I'm going to sell you my birth, my birthright, but uh, we're not serious. If the problem is that physically you can't make the transaction take place because there's nothing for it to play, take place with, then swearing about it doesn't help. Okay, but I swear that it transfers. Yeah, but but you have to have something physical. However, if the problem is simply Gamiras Das, then I don't think you're serious about this. So Yaakov covered his bases. He says, uh, this sale is a little bit dubious. Let's swear about it. And he says, I've swore. So the, the deal was, was sealed. Why? Because uh, it showed, Smichus Das, it showed that he is serious about this sale. However, if you say that it's not about, it's not a problem of uh, resolve, it's a problem of physically getting the transfer to work, then it wouldn't work. The Rivash says, swearing doesn't help. I wanted to make a suggestion that uh, although generally you can't sell something or buy something that wasn't born yet, maybe here it's different because here we're talking about the promise of God. God promised that Abraham's inheritance would go to Yitzchak, Yitzchak's inheritance would go to Yaakov, etc. So this is not something that wasn't born yet. It's born. If God says you get the land, you get the land. Now, it is very intangible. The, the sense that uh, Isaac controls the land is, is quite amorphous. I mean, people in, in Gerar, they don't recognize his authority. Um, no, one, no one, when Abraham was trying to buy a, a, a burial plot, no one recognized his authority. The, his, their acquisition of the land is very tenuous, very amorphous, but not really. In reality, there's God's promise, and that's serious. Not one word of God's, uh, God's promises will come out empty-handed. So maybe that's why it does work in this situation. The Ketos Achoshen, a very major authority on the, on the, Shul, on the Shulchan Aruch and the Choshen Mishpat, talks about different laws, monetary laws. He says, this is not about acquisition. It's about siluk. You see, sometimes I take this book and I give it to you. Sometimes I say, look, I don't need this book anymore. Putting it over here, anybody can come take it. What am I doing? I'm being misalik. I'm not giving it to everyone else. I'm being misalik. I'm removing myself. What do they have to do? Lama zali What do I need the firstborn for? I don't need it anymore. Here it is. You want it, you don't want it. Anybody can take it. So maybe that's what's going on here. Rather than acquisition, it's siluk, it's removal. But then, you have another solution to this problem. And that is the solution of the Rashbam, solution of the Forna. And Rabbi Basha Weiss analyzes it. I'll just share that with you. The solution of the Rashbam is that, that he didn't sell the birthright for a bowl of soup. There was surely a sale. A sale involves money. How much it was, uh, doesn't say. But when you want to seal a deal of a sale, what do you do? You have a little meal together. Now, let's say you have a big business meal. You go to, go to Dallas, make a big business a deal. You're going to sell a big building there in Dallas. So what do you do? You go and you have dinner with the fellow. And with the, having dinner, that seals it. You talk about it, and the deal is sealed. So maybe today is not as firm, but in those days, when you have, let's say, a covenant, Yitzchak in this parsha has a covenant, and he, he has a meal with them, part of the covenantal meal, like a Seder, um, a Shabbos meal, you, uh, the acquisition is made. It's a custom in those days to have a meal to affirm a covenant or a deal. So, What's the real deal? What's, what's that called? Uh, the Talmud calls it uh, situmta. Uh, it's some kind of seal or mark. Let's say I want to buy 100 barrels of wine. Well, I can't pick them up. I don't have a truck right now to take all the barrels. But I want to, we made the deal. I'm going to buy 100 barrels. So I make a mark on one of the barrels. And with that, all the barrels become mine. Or I put the seal on it. I didn't lift it up. I didn't pay you money, money. But the custom was that if you put your mark on the barrels, it's your barrel. So then all the barrels become yours. Similarly, if you uh, make a handshake, if uh, lower in the, uh, in the diamond district in, uh, in New York, if uh, when people shake hands and they say, Mazel Bracha, the uh, diamond trans- transfers hands, then that's what it is. Uh, it's, it's this uh, minag, it's the custom in that particular place that that's how you seal the deal. Now, although when it comes to regular acquisitions, you're trying to 
buy something with money, uh, buy something by taking it. That doesn't work if you, there's nothing to take. If there's nothing to buy. What are you getting? You, you give $100, what do you get? You get nothing. It hasn't been born yet. That's a problem. But here with a handshake, it's symbolic. And, and Rabbi Weiss explains that the whole idea of the handshake is what? It's, 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 the, it's not an act of acquisition where something transfers, like when you give the money or you take the object. But rather, you know what it is? It's simply showing my Gmir Stas. When I shake hands, it shows that we agree on this deal. So, so too, when they make that meal, it shows that they agree. And what's the essence of a deal anyway? It's, is it, it when I buy this book, is the important thing, I gave you the money and you gave me the book, is that important? A lot of people give me books and they expect it back. What's important is that you, you agreed that you're going to give me this book and not take it back, and I agreed that I was going to get it and keep it. So the essence of an of a, of a acquisition is to, train, to transfer ownership and that we both agree with this deal. When people get married, it's not the giving of the ring that's important, it's the tzfiyas, it's the agreement of the woman that she agrees to this point, and the husband intends to marry her. That's the important thing. So here the intent was made clear, and when the intent is clear, then who cares what the object is? It's not about the object. Similarly, the Sforno says <clears throat> that the, the deal was with the bowl. You see, it's a king chalipin. King chalipin works like this. At a wedding, for instance, the bride is going to acquire all these rights from the husband. How, they, how is she going to acquire it? The money, what, the, what are they going to do? You're going to, she's going to get some gold and silver? No. We simply, the rabbi takes an object of value, not a piece of paper, and he shakes it, and the other person, the groom, lifts it up, and with that, uh, he agrees to all the terms of the ketubah. That he's going to give, he owes a certain amount of money to the wife under certain circumstances. So, similarly over here, when he gave him that bowl of soup, it was like, you know, in the, in the book of Ruth, take off your shoe, you give it to the other fellow, and with that, the transfer is affirmed. Similarly here, the, it's not about actually transferring the goods. It's about, it's about um, agreeing to this point, and you can agree with it. The, it's the, about the essence of the deal, that we both agree to this deal by transferring the, the bowl of soup. They agree to the deal. If you agree to the deal, it doesn't matter if you don't have the object. It's not about the object. When you take something, it's about the object. When you give money, it's about the object. When you shake hands, or when you uh, shake a, a cloth, or in this case, you shake a bowl of soup, then it's, it's about the agreement, the essence of the agreement, that, that we agree to this transfer. You agree to give it, I agree to take it, the deal is sealed. And, but the only problem is, the Gemara says that the peri lo avdi chalipin, that you can't make the transfer of this symbolic uh, waving of a handkerchief type of thing with fruit. And a bowl of soup is basically fruit. But if it's the bowl, the bowl is a vessel. And that works. So Yaakov did it in a way that it actually worked. So the Russia Weiss points out that he, he did it in all these ways that made the deal uh, kind of work. He did it with the bowl. He said it's, it takes effect now, it's not later. Uh, according to Rashbam, they made that meal to seal the deal. He made him swear so it would seal the deal. Or that uh, it was like waving that bowl, um, giving him the bowl, that, that symbolized transfer and symbolize their agreement on this deal. So, uh, did it work? I don't know. It's, it's an interesting question. But certainly you can make an argument that in Jewish law, there's a basis for the deal to have indeed worked. But uh, in the end, uh, perhaps, as Redox suggests, it's not, it's not necessary to do all this. We know the blessing will go to the person the blessing is supposed to go to. Even Isaac knows the Birkas Avram, the blessing of Abraham, goes to, his, to Yaakov. There's no question about it. Uh, the question simply was, where would the, the money, the power, where would that go? Yitzchak had one idea, Rivka and God had another. Thank you for joining us here at the Anshay Sefer Beth Lameth Congregation for our discussion of the Parsha on the various holidays. Thanks to Jason Lefkowitz, our producer. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asbe.org.